You want to start with backing tracks and click track to your band, but you're on a budget? Don't worry, stick around for this video and I will show you the most affordable way to do it today. Hi, I'm Max Hayes from the band Psychedelic and today I'm going to show you a really affordable way to use click tracks and backing tracks to your band when you're doing live performance and doing rehearsal. In my band we've been using backing tracks for quite a while now and I've been going through a couple of systems to make it happen. The first one that I started out with was basically a uh, Roland SPD-S and this module was set up so that it had two outputs. It was either right output or left output so I would put the click track on one output and then put the uh, synths or the backing tracks on the other output. The only downside with this system was that everything was in mono and listening to it for a long time it actually makes you a bit idiot after a while. So my next solution was basically to incorporate the uh, Roland SPD SX because that one had two outputs. It had one output that I could send the backing tracks and then I had like the other output that I could send the click tracks to. The only problem was that I had to do two tracks basically one backing track and then one click track. And even if I incorporated a lot of synths and sounds on the backing track, when I did the click track, that track was actually just as big as the first track. So because it was an internal memory in the SPD SX, it actually took up double the space, that, so it wasn't actually working out really well. And one big downside with this was that you could only play the song from the beginning to the end so when we were rehearsing and we wanted to rehearse for the synths we always had to go through the whole song. So I sold those solutions a couple of years ago. And now I wanted to go back to do old songs and new songs with backing tracks and click tracks so I was looking around on the internet to find a solution for this and it was actually on one forum that one person suggested hey why don't you get the Zoom R8. The Zoom R8 is basically just a uh, portable uh, recording device when you look at it first but what actually sets it apart from the other recording device on the market is that you can have a click track on this one and you can basically route that click track to the phone's output and then what happens is that you can basically set it so that the phone's output only outputs that click track. You have two outputs on the back where you can output the backing track. And there's also a phone's output where you can output the click track. So this is really handy from a really, really smart recorder. But hey, wait, there's more. Because this recorder has eight channels included, you can basically set up the songs or the backing tracks on all the uh, channels on the recorder. So one and two here is set up for intros and bridge parts. Three and four is set up for verses, five and six for chorus parts. On the seventh channel, I've actually set up our singer because she doesn't always uh, rehearse together with us. And on the eighth channel, I put the uh, click track. The problem I had before with the Roland drum pads was when I did a backing track, I took it to rehearsal, I played it with the band and I found out, okay, so the parts in the verse was too low or it was too high, then I always had to go back, I had to make a note when I was in the rehearsal room, I had to go back and make a new file and then put it in again. The big advantage with the R8 is that I can actually mix it when I'm playing with a band and then I would just save it because the R8 has also got a really, really good feature that you can do a protect. You can basically lock it to that setting and then you can't change it. So nothing can go wrong when you're out playing. Another great feature with the R8 is that you could choose whatever channel is going to be your click track. So if you have a song that has different time structure and stuff like that, you basically just take that uh, click track from your recording program like Logic for example, and then you just put that on number 8. And then you basically just tell the uh, R8 that that is going to be your click track. 
So as I mentioned, you could take the files from your recording program and basically just put it in here because this has the same setup as it is in your computer. You hook this one up to the computer, it basically becomes like a, an external hard drive and the system is based on folders and you just gotta have the right files to put in those folders. So after uh, exporting the files to the R8 to the memory card, you have to go into that project which your song is and then just assign whatever it's going to be on the different channel. It actually is really really fast to do this and if it's a stereo track it would occupy two channels and if it's a mono track it will only occupy one channel. As I mentioned before with the other system that we had we always had to play the song from the beginning to the end. There's actually a good solution for this here. This one has got markers so what you can use these markers for is you can put markers in your song. I have done this so that uh, because of the tempo being the same tempo as the song I would put the markers four beats before the actual event that I want to rehearse. If I want to go through the chorus, I would put the marker four beats before the chorus and the band can hear one, two, three, four, and there you go. So this is really, really handy. Now we don't have to play it from the beginning to the end. We could actually rehearse from the marker and just go from that part and rehearse the part that we really want to dig into. Another really good feature with the R8 that is actually it's got a control in here on the back. What that means is that with an expression pedal or a pedal, you can actually start and stop the recording. I think we're gonna use this in the future to be able to do that live when we're using it on stage with the band. Funnily enough, this R8 is actually the only one that has got that feature with the control in. If you look at the R24 for example, unfortunately they didn't include that feature on that model. So the Zoom R8 can be a real lifesaver for bands on a budget. I hope you've liked this video and if you have any questions or comments to this video then please let me know in the comment section below. And if you like videos about being in a band, then don't hesitate to uh, subscribe to this channel because we try to do videos about being in a band and being on a budget. I hope you can incorporate the Zoom R8 to your setup and have a lot of great performance in the future. So I hope to see you around and hey, as always, use it for good, not for evil.